Morning, guys. Need a drink. It's early morning. We're trying to film this early morning. It's 10 to 9. We do get a early this, but before the phone calls happen and before the people walk in. So I have some microfiber pads here. Lake Country ones. There's four. So if you're familiar with microfiber, you actually know that they are quite an aggressive cut, but leave quite a nice finish. So why have we got four here? So what we've got is two extremely heavy cut, a one-step cut and a, a finishing polishing microfiber. These are very similar. For this vehicle in question, this one over there, you would have seen in a previous video that we had really good finish, we have moderate finish, and we have some really bad defects. So I don't want to use a really heavy cut over the whole car, but it's unnecessary. So what I have, I'll show you in a minute, I've got a little chart here from the Lake Country range that helps describe the cut levels of these. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to walk over to the vehicle and show you something I've already done. As a, you can see by I've put some compound on there, there's the compound staining. So these are very heavy cut and I can tell already they're going to be way too aggressive for what we need to do over there. So for the moment, I'm going to just discard them and work on just these two. So if I bring you over to this chart, so what we've got on this chart here is a... Uh, we come down the microfiber pad range here. So we've got the least aggressive, the most aggressive. You can notice here the microfiber, this black one here, is actually very, very low down, almost a finishing pad. Whereas this one step here, so we've got a one step polishing pad, that is really, really high up. So I did say the other two we've discarded up there. So if I come back over to these two, these two here, the heavy duty and the standard heavy cut, they are these two here, which are right up the top range, like the two thirds, maybe three quarters of the range up. So they're right next to where wall pads start. So if you, anyone that knows about wall polish on a rotary, it's very aggressive. So as I said, we don't need those on that vehicle. I'm certain we don't. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna walk over to the car and I'm gonna show you what has happened using these. And I'm gonna do a little bit of myth busting at the same time. So let me take these over. Do you remember in the video that the bonnet just had some light staining and it had fallout on there that was shown in a wash video? So what we've got, I'm gonna turn all the lights on. What I've done, I'm gonna lay these down there. I've actually polished this section here. Sorry, ran away. Right. This section here with this pad, this section here. So again, that's the finishing pad. That's their one-step cutting pad. And on their charts, there's a huge range difference between these two. So of course, this might be too aggressive, this might be not aggressive enough. So how do we tell? So the only thing we can do is put a bright light source and move them out of the way on these two surfaces. So if I go in close, that has been cut and you probably can't see any sort of polishing marks from there, any sort of micro marring. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come over to this side and the same thing again. There's nothing you can see. So they look at the moment to the untrained these two pads look like they've gave the same cut so that means lake country have either got their chart wrong which is doesn't seem correct it can't be surely someone like lake country that have been going for 60 years making polishing pads for years and years how can they have got this that far wrong how can it be that's really really fine cut that's a really heavy cut nearly the heaviest cut before wall pad and they gave the same finish so let me show you a big thing that happens in this trade if I leave the lights on, and we'll do that again, and I'm gonna get the remote ready to turn the lights off. So we go in close again. You can see there's no, what we call micro marring. And then I'm gonna step over to this side. There's no micro marring. We have a problem. The bulb is flooding the surface. So a human eye does this, and a camera does just the same. If I keep too close, you can't see a difference. So if I come out and now turn the ambient lights off, the background lights, and then I move this bolt over, now you can see that the right-hand side has got micro marring, the left-hand side hasn't. So there now shows a really clear, obvious comparison of defects. We can zoom in as well. Yeah. And getting closer, that's it and you can really see the difference. Watch what happens to stay there. As I get in closer, it floods. Now, if we move across, it's hard to tell the difference. There's a slight difference, but what I have done, I've turned the lights, the ambient lighting off in this building. And when you look at the two like that, 
it's, it looks the same. But as we come about away, so I'm actually, if you look, pan back and look how high I'm holding this light, I've got that light exceptionally high, as high as I can take it. So of course, we've got lights on the ceiling here at higher. So why am I trying to demonstrate this? If we have too much lighting in here, the ambient lighting gets really, really strong, so this becomes less powerful. So people then put this very, very close to make it powerful, but you can see now it doesn't work. In this case, it's a terrible situation because you are flooding that light, that panel, the light's bouncing back in your eyes, and you can't see any information. As soon as I do that, it becomes easier. I can see it. The moment I turn the lights off, it becomes more noticeable. So you do see people with buildings, all their buildings have got white walls or black walls. There's a common trend now for dark gray, black walls to do this effect. But you don't need dark walls, and I don't want dark walls, I want bright white walls. So when I'm doing general detailing, it's a lovely flooded light surface in here for looking for dirt round edges for doing interiors. Yes, when I wanna do polishing, I might wanna turn these off, but if you can turn them off and make the room darker, you can see defects better. So the further I come away the light, the more it, the easier it becomes. Now, just because these are sort of polishing marks in a uniform pattern like a sanding mark, doesn't mean that's the only thing where this theory works, where the light has to be further away. It actually works with sanding marks, water stains, bird poo, etching, prep marks in paint, dry paint. You want to be further away with the light source. The sun is millions of miles away. It's not really close, so we look at it with sun. Like this one here. What I don't want to do is get in really close and flood that. So you can see now, it's flooded the light. As soon as I take that light away, this light source is further away. I'll pick this light source up. As we get closer and closer, it starts to flood it. But you can see that one actually still captures it close. So we have different types of light sources, different Kelvins, different lumens, for different purposes. But there's a good example. I can get so close to that light. And I see so many YouTubers and detailers posting up work like that when they take the light away it could just be a trickery. You don't want a light source close. So these head torches, these torches that you can strap onto polishing machines are a waste of time because they are actually masking the defects you're trying to polish. So let me go to the Lake Country one step pad. It may look like a heavy defect, but that's still a nice heavy cut. So now this pad works perfectly because I need a heavier cut. It's not the heaviest cut. They do do two more pads that are even heavier. So I've gone for sort of, if there was such a thing as a middle range, this is not quite a middle range, it's sort of two thirds up their scale. I'm gonna polish this area. So if I'd had a lamp bolted, let me get this, to the side here and did that, the one I'm polishing, which I see all the time, they do this, I can't see. So what do I have to do? Stop polishing and pull the light, the machine away. Well, if that's the case, I might as well put a light on a stall or a light on a trolley like that, magnet one, turn it at the right angle, I can now see the defects. So if I was to move this trolley around, I can move the trolley, angle the light, I can see the light, that light's set up so the camera can see it. So it's, if you can't see the defects, how can you fix them? We have an issue if you do polish up close. Customers, when they see their car outdoors, is in the sunlight. And again, the sun's millions of miles away. And then, it's at a different angle, it's not flooded like that. And you've got the sun changes through the day. It starts off very, very yellow, a very warm color, goes towards midday, gets very, very bright. Before the end of the day, again, it goes very, very yellow and a warm color. The Kelvins change. So we've now got a sunlight actually altering during the day. So depending on when the person looks at their car and what angle the sun's at, and what color their car is, how good their eyes are, there's many, many factors here that can all affect what the defect looks like, or does you can see it or you can't see it. As a detailer, what we don't want to do is miss those defects. So you do need various light sources. You do need to understand distances, so pull the light away. Example, a dark color car, like a black car, you could put the light up very, very close and it will show the swirls because the dark color is absorbing most of the light, so less is reflecting back. If you put the light on a silver car, like this car behind, what would happen is you would have to 
if you did that, you won't see anything. Same theory. As I go back further and further and further, I can now start to see defects. So, same thing again here. So, I'm not sure if the camera, because obviously silver is very, very subtle, but there is swirls there. So, as I go in closer, they get flooded away. So, how many times do I see fo photos and videos of people doing this with a light? That's for any nano coatings, any surface, any wax. If you go in close, you can't see. You should bring the light further away, move the light, then you start to see the defects. So silver cars have got just as many swirls, same as white cars, as a black car. It's just, unfortunately, people don't understand lighting and how the human eye works and how a camera also adjusts for white balance, for exposure, its shutter speed to do with lighting. Once you understand all that, it actually makes your job as a detailer harder. And what I mean by that, you see more, you have more to fix. So you end up taking longer, you fix more. Of course, the outcome for the customer is better and you can unfortunately be doing a much better job and the detailer that you're pricing against could well be very, very cheap and they believe they're fixing the defects just simply because they've watched lots of videos of people doing this and go, oh yeah, it's fixed. So what I'm gonna do, I am gonna stop talking now because obviously you're gonna pick up the polishing machine. We'll do a quick bit of polishing and then we'll show you the after effect. <laughs> I've just polished that with a dual action machine. It's a flex machine. I really, really, really like the machine. It's starting to impress me the more I use it. So you can see that's dry. So before we clean it with some alcohol, well, I was getting close now. And then I'll put this light back on, but not close like that. Obviously now you understand why the light's further away. We're gonna move the light around. So now, I can see it's got the, the micro mar in from the polishing, which it should. So, so I'm just gonna use some alcohol, not g panel wipe in this case, because I've got more to do in the car, it's just a demonstration. So if I use g panel wipe, it would be fine. So if we come back in, whatever fillers are in the compound, it does look slightly worse now, more hazy. But that's just machine haze, which will polish out the refining stage. Again, when I get in close, it floods the light. So if I move that light out of the way, you can see it was one pass, really easy fix. Really easy fix with the Lake Country pad. That was the one step microfiber pad on a flex machine. It's a large orbit mach battery machine. Again, I've got a different video about that machine. So hopefully that makes sense. That what if we had the light too close? Let's go back a bit. We had the wrong lighting in the building. We didn't understand. We didn't lift the car up so it's the right height. I didn't put this light on this stall so if the light was down there, you wouldn't have seen that defect. So you see now why I scan the car. My staff scan this car for a long, long time to actually make sure they see every little defect. And you've already seen quite often the magic marker of masking tape. We'll put that masking tape on defects like that, as you've seen before in Tesla videos, in this video, you know, do a mark there, and it's, we can photograph, film it, so it helps us document where the marks are, so when we start the car, move it, as it's up here, it's upstairs, we've got where to polish. We can take the tape off, polish some areas. So an older car, which is heavily swirly, we won't mark so much, we'll just polish the whole car heavy cut everywhere as a as two-stage correction. Hopefully that makes sense. So if you liked what you saw, or you liked what I'm saying to you, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that bell. I'm Kelly Harris, goodbye.